Before we talk about Leonard's perpetual motion, it's important to know a little bit about his life and where he comes from. Uh, Leonard became the chief of the Belgian school of violin playing after Charles de Berio. He produced many volumes worth of uh, pedagogical texts, about this big when they're all printed out. Uh, if you're a teacher or a very advanced student, I highly recommend going on imslp.org and sifting through some of the volumes of Leonard's work. There are a lot of studies for beginning students, as well as some very difficult position studies that likely inspired Henry Schradiak to write his set of position studies. After all, Schradiak was a student of Hubert Leonard. One of the most fascinating aspects of Hubert Leonard's life is that he was apparently a student of the great violinist Francois Prune. Prune was the youngest professor at the Belgian Conservatory at age 17, and Leonard likely studied with him privately even before that point. By some, Francois Prune was considered to be at least at the level of Paganini. However, Prune died at the age of 33 of cholera and was likely blind in the last couple years of his life. Francois Prune left us with several works, including some concertos, uh, and his most uh, well-known work called Melancholy. Francois Prume obviously had a great insight into the violin and its workings, and I think uh, the works of Hubert Leonard uh, reflect that influence. The perpetual motion by Leonard is perhaps the most difficult work of all of the works in the first position pieces set. I recommend breaking this piece up into very small chunks of one measure or possibly even two or four measures at a time. Do very slow rhythm practicing on the string and just like the Haydn perpetual motion, we'll add spiccato bow strokes much later in the game. There is some very limited second position work at the end of this piece and for inexperienced students uh, there is an osia, an alternative ending, that will keep you in second position instead of shifting up into the C major scale. However, if you're starting to already work on your three octave scales, uh, why not give the uh, more impressive ending of this piece a shot? In that scale, I like to use a very similar fingering to the C major scale in the three octave scales packet. Starting on first finger C, first finger F, first finger F, four, four. That's a pretty common scale finger pattern. I think when you're performing this piece with a spiccato bow stroke, it's sometimes very interesting to come on the string for very heavy uh, sections of the piece and also for uh, accented strokes. So for instance in the fortissimo I think the music is served very well by that variety in bow stroke. Also nearing the end of the piece where we see accents, why not come on the string a little bit for those as well? <laughs> 